Hello, Beauty News family. Welcome to Beauty News. This is the 31st of July edition. We're going to be talking about new release beauty products and updates of some things that we've talked about in the past. Mm -hmm. We do have some updates. Um, I don't think we have any housekeeping, so we may as well just get into it. Let's get into it. Except that Excellent. we're in winter. Can you tell by our Oh, back yes. I wish winter looked this cool. Yeah, I know. I wish our winters looked like this. They don't. They don't. All right. So um, first thing is Fenty. They have um, sort of relaunched a gloss bomb in the shade Cheeky. So this was previously seen as a mini in a holiday 2019 pack. And now it's available in a full size. Um, it's described as a shimmering bright orange. And 100% of every purchase of Gloss Bomb in Cheeky goes to the Clara Lionel Foundation. Uh, it's available now exclusively from Fenty Beauty. Interesting. That's interesting mm. they've done that, though, because um, other shades from that holiday pack they've brought out as permanent. So I think yes. Hot Chocolate was one of them. So I think they're sort of just working through the holiday mini set and releasing Looks like it. All permanently but it's weird yeah. that this one is um exclusive i understand that they've probably done that because it's easier to track the donations if it's yeah. just coming from the one source but it's weird that they haven't like maybe we'll see is that going to be forever because it doesn't sound like a limited edition item no i'm i'm not sure it doesn't say if that's like a limited offer um so I'm not sure, but at the end of the day, the um, the charity is owned by Rihanna, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's that. Yeah. So I, I that's reckon impact what they'll, deduction. That's true. I reckon what they'll probably do is um, release this temporarily and then bring it back in like Sephora and everything minus the um, yeah. Donations. probably but it's a nice color like i yeah. i i'm always for more of a nude lip balm but i think this is one that they've missed in their collection like they've they've gone to the pinks and everything but they haven't yet gone to the oranges so i think yeah. it's a nice addition to their range all right we've also seen more information about fenty skin so last week we talked about um fenty skin so it's coming very soon also did you see Haley, that um shortly after we filmed that jeffree star mentioned that they're going to have, have jeffree star skincare as well and we were saying yeah. last week that how like it seems like the next thing is brands um bringing out skincare like sister brands and it was just yeah. so typical that <laughs> i wonder star what jeffree's created. skincare brand will be called jeffree skin Sounds like a serial killer. <laughs> All right, so Fenty Skin, um, what we've seen so far, so these are launching soon, 31st mm -hmm. of July, 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time at Fenty Skin. So there's also early access available from the 29th of July. So if you sign up to an email, you can get early access. Um, but again, we said last week that this is exclusive to the Fenty Skin website. It's not yet at Sephora or it's not coming to Sephora. I'm not too sure. Okay, so they're launching with three products. They're saying it's a simple three-step routine and they're two-in-one multitasking products. So what they have is the Total Cleanser Remove It All Cleanser. Yeah, that sounded clunky. Love that name. I think that just so clunked smooth. out of your face hole. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a clunker. Uh, so that's yeah. 25 US dollars, but the two-in-one element of that is that it's a makeup remover and cleanser. Uh, then we've got the Fat Water Pore Refining Toner Serum. Another great name. 28 US dollars. And again, that is a toner and a serum together. Um, and then we've got the Hydra Visor Invisible Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Sunscreen. So that's 35 US dollars. And again, moisturizer and sunscreen. So they're all sort of two in one products. And um, yeah, like I don't mind the packaging. I think it looks kind of sleek. It looks yeah. like a more higher end version of Kylie Skin. Yeah, it does actually. I really like the look of the um, moisturizer SPF in one. That packaging yeah. looks really cool. I not like I don't 
really care about the product. I mean, it could be, you know, shit in a bottle and I'd still say the packaging looks really cool. It's just the packaging I'm interested in on yeah, that one product. Yeah, it's interesting they've gone for that soft sort of millennial purple. Um, yeah. So Kylie went for the millennial pink. This is still I prefer it over the millennial pink. Yeah, but they've also got a bit of millennial pink with the colour of fat water, but, you know, very trendy, yeah. very trendy. The next thing we're going to talk about is One Size from Patrick Starr. Um, now, these are new products. We haven't actually seen them, but since we were talking about products launching from his brand last week, we're considering it a, an update because this is very, like, sort of, I don't know, ColourPop-esque with, the like, the way it's being released one thing after another, very sort of hype train, get yeah, it out there, like, flood the market. Yeah, it, and I just find it a really strange thing to do because he launched with such a disappoint, disappointing release. It's like makeup wipes and a makeup melting spray that it seems so lackluster and they made such a big deal about it. But literally a couple of days later, they're like, wait, actually, we do have makeup. Why not launch it all together? Yeah. Don't even, I honestly, I have no idea. I have no it's idea. so confusing. I think it's more legitimate to launch with a decent range of products rather than being like, here's two crappy items and just wait three days until we announce the next thing that's actually makeup. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. It's actually makeup. It's just I know. Like, like, I think I wouldn't have hated the release so much if they had it as like a side piece to makeup. Yeah. It would I, make I would've, more sense. It'd make more sense. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's very strange. Yeah. I'm not sure what the reasoning behind releasing makeup removing products and then actual makeup a week later is. I don't, I don't get that, but whatever. Um, the items consist of the Visionary Eyeshadow Palette. So I think this is, is it a 15 pan palette? Yes. Yeah. 15 pan palette. It's kind of um, nude with green and blue yeah, and black. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, then we have some like, they're kind of like the Stiller Magnificent Metals. These are called Eye Popper Sparkle Vision Liquid Eyeshadows. They're $22 each. There's five shades. You've got a champagne nude, metallic taupe, an iridescent rose, metallic black, and a gilded olive. Then we have the Point Made 24-hour liquid eyeliner pen in Bodelicious, no, sorry, Bodacious Black. It's 19 US dollars. And then there's the Point Made 24-hour gel eyeliner. These are 19 US dollars each. Comes in Bodacious Black, which is a matte black, and Busty Brown, which is a matte cool dark brown. <sighs> I hate it. <laughs> I hate it too. I hate um, it. You know what it reminds me of? What? That stupid Lady Gaga brand. What's it called? House Labs. That's it. <laughs> See, it's so irrelevant to me that I'm just like, I forget. I even forget who that bitch is. Yeah. I, I hate agree. it. I agree with you. Um, and it's hard because the palette itself on paper looks like something that I would theoretically be interested in, but it's, it's just, yeah, me it's, too. it's, it's, it has not hit the mark. Um, I like that it is a nude and sort of like semi muted colors, which is what I'm sort of into at the moment, but I've been trying to think about why I don't like this. And I think it's, I think this looks like it's a smart layout, but I think it looks mm. so lackluster. There's no richness. There's no depth. There's no, doesn't look like it is a like nice pigmentation. It just looks. It looks really like sort of Amazon muted. makeup. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks muted. It looks like they've taken the saturation, they've turned it down a bit, and it just looks a bit wishy washy. I do mm -hmm. like that the top row are all mattes, and what they what it looks like is done is taken the basic colors. So you have like a really light, almost off white color. You have a cool tone brown, a dark rich chocolate, a warm tone brown and a black, which is sort of like mm. your basic. And then in the columns, he's added like yellows, oranges, peaches, olives, blues. So I understand that 
it's it's well thought out i just don't see any richness in texture or in pigmentation and even though i really love nude eyeshadow palettes and i love olives i like the the color or the texture ramped up a bit i need it to mm -hmm. have some like oomph to it whereas this just looks like rah, rah, like it just looks like snooze fest yeah I haven't liked black in eyeshadow palettes for a long time now because I simply don't use them and I feel like it's just so overdone. Um, and obviously blue and green, I don't wear it. So I'm not really interested in the palette, but like you, when I look at it, I'm like, why does this just scream? I don't know what I'm doing. It almost like, screams Morphe. It does a bit. It's yeah. it's a bit like Amazony, Morphe ish, makeup revolution ish. I'm like, yeah, what happened? What? Yeah, I don't feel like it doesn't look. And okay, we're just judging it on the marketing photos, but it just yeah. doesn't look like it's it's got interesting finishes and rich mm. colors. And again, nudes can have rich colors. Um, yeah, I feel like it looks a bit wishy washy. And for forty two US dollars. It looks way overpriced, in my opinion. Um, I have to say the yeah. other releases aren't too bad, like having a liquid liner, a brown and a black pen liner, a pencil liner, sorry, and these um, sort of nude metallic um, liquid eyeshadows. Again, they're so basic, but they've been done time and time again, so it doesn't interest me. There's nothing here I'm like, yeah. wow, I really need a new black liner. No, I don't. The um, swatches look patchy as well. And these are marketing swatches. Yeah. I think it looks patchy though because they're glittery. So, yeah. but I, I don't know. I have so many magnificent medals in my collection. And as it is, they're drying up as I speak because I don't use them mm -hmm. enough. So this, this is not something that I like or I, I need in my life. So I, I feel no. like uh, when we, when we originally talked about this brand releasing and we were like, Patrick Starr knows how to put together a color combo. I don't know why he just, it's like he just gave up. He's like, I've got a brand, but I'm going to release something so boring that I understand that it's versatile and it's one size, but I, don't, I can't imagine anyone being like, this is my perfect palette. I must have it. No. Oh. I, like I'm curious about the formula of the eyeshadows and the other products, I suppose. But yeah, this is not enough to make me want to spend my money. No, but it's all available no. now if you want it. Moving on to new stuff. Uh, we've got something here from Christian Louboutin. They are the Luby Dazzle liquid lipsticks. So these are a limited summer release. They come in three shades. You've got um, Forever Girl, Rouge Louboutin and Miss Strazi. And these are matte liquid lipsticks that have the the glitter in them. When you like press your lips together, the, li they, the glitter they comes call out. Them slow release glitter or something, something weird like that. Maybe that they call them Who, something. Yeah, I know that um, uh, Sugar Pill do these. Um, yes, and, also and Ciate. Ciate. Yeah. yeah, Ciate did them as well. So, so pretty much it's a matte liquid lipstick that has little particles of shimmer in it. So when you press your lips together or rub the lips, um, it takes the top layer off the glitter and it leaves them quite sparkly. Yeah, I don't know. I like the colours. Yeah, I like the colours too, but I'm not really into the sparkly stuff. No, to be fair, if I really wanted to treat myself and if i had access to these which we don't in australia but if i really wanted to treat myself and i was like i really want to try a high-end fancy schmancy liquid lipstick that orangey red one i would try if it wasn't for the glitter yeah fair. i feel like the glitter is ruining it i i'm not sure why brands are still doing this Nothing in 2020 counts anyway. So if you're going to fuck shit up, fuck it up now. Because yeah. people will repress this year anyway. So don't worry. Too That's much. true. All right. We've got a new collection from Colourpop. They're back mm -hmm. at it. Yeah. So this is the Wild Nothing collection. Strange name. Wild mm. Nothing. Um, and it is a vegan collection. Interesting. Which is interesting. interesting. Yeah. So this is already launched. Um, we've got the Wild Nothing 
eyeshadow palette sort of up my alley. It sort of reminds mm. me a little bit of an element of the one size one, but a little bit more, I don't know. There's something a little bit more interesting about this. I don't know if it's because ColourPop take better photos. Um, so the sort Possibly, of palettes yeah. look a little bit more punchy. Um, and there are some cool shades. Like if you actually look at it swatch, there are some that almost look duochrome which interests mm -hmm. me. But this is essentially a nude eyeshadow palette. It's got some peachy tones, some brownie tones, and some sort of like muted green tones to it, uh, which is quite a trendy color story for nudes these days. So they've jumped on that. Uh, we've got four cream eyeshadows. Um, these look like MAC, uh, Mac uh, what were they? Paint, paint pots. pots. Yeah, um, they do. Cool. So there's four nude shades. There's almost like a warm toned nude, a cool toned nude, a mid toned nude, and a deeper sort of like chocolatey sort of nude. Um, we've got four Lux lip oils, which are a new formula. Uh, there's a clear and then the rest are nudes. Um, so we've seen the Lux velvet, the Lux glosses, and now these are the lip oil versions, which yeah, sound cool. There's three pressed powder blushes, um, which again, nice colors. There's a peachy nude, a pink, and then a nude nude. Um, and then we've got two jelly mutt shadows. And these look a little bit different. I don't know if they're just less glittery. Mm. They look- Yeah, these look more shimmery rather than like yeah, more metallic. metallic. Yeah. Yeah. Like Mojave Moves looks gorgeous. It does. Swatch, it it's looks stunning. really special. Yeah, this is, um, uh, it's an interesting release. I'm really intrigued by the Lux Lip Oils. Yes, They're so like, I would, I would chuck all of them in my cart if I was making a ColourPop order for sure. Um, oh, actually, I wouldn't because I turned out that I hated their Lux lip glosses. They are, they're strange. They're just weird, that formula. Um, I, didn't, I didn't like the Lux velvets either. No, I think I tried one of them, but they were way too dry for me. So they never survive long enough for me to develop a memory about them, I suppose. Um, but it's like, it's very nude. It's just a really nude wearable collection. All right, cover effects. We haven't heard from them in ages. I feel like oh. they release two things a year. That's they, it. I think about three years ago was their peak. They were going gangbusters. Yeah. yeah. They were going so well they after they released the their um, custom cover drops. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm just, I just keep losing my arm. <laughs> anyway, um, when they, yeah, when they released their custom cover drops, they were on everyone's radar and everyone was talking about them. And then they had like the illuminating drops and the bronzing drops. Um, and then they sort of just nosedived after, after their weird. blush and bronzer duos. Yeah, I know. I don't know what's up with them, but they are trying to release something. So they have released the Luminous Tinted Moisturizer. They're saying it's an innovative prebiotic and probiotic formula that blur blurs pores and fine lines, improves radiance and helps replenish and restore skin's natural barrier. Um, it's supposed to strengthen the skin with pre and probiotics. It's also got anti-stress adapters to 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 defend against environmental aggressors and bamboo, lotus flower and water lily to hydrate and soothe. Comes in four shades, it's 39 US dollars. You've got fair light, which is supposed to cover the cover effects foundation shades between zero and 35. Medium is for 40 to 60, tan is for 70 to 90 and deep is for 100 to 125. Uh, there's also a custom application brush for $39. This must be like no super coverage. Sheer. Yeah, it'd be super sheer. Proper, proper tint. Yeah, I don't know. I Look, I think it's a good time to bring it out. It's US and uh -huh. um, Northern Hemisphere. It's summer, so it makes sense. Yeah. I do feel like if you are shade zero or your shade 125, You'll probably be very disappointed in these. Uh, so I feel like, you know, if yeah. you're smack bang in the middle of those color ranges, you're probably doing like 
probably suits you pretty well. But yeah. um, I think if you're on the like the end of them, it it's not going to do probably it. Probably not going to work. Yeah. Look, it, yeah. It, it, it it's a tinted moisturizer. It is. It is. All right, from M Cosmetics, uh, we've got some new shades of the Color Drop Drops Serum Blush. Uh, these are really popular products, uh, and whenever I hear people recommend M Cosmetics, they always talk about these. So if you're into more of, I guess not a, it's not a cream blush, it's a liquid sort of serum blush, like it says in the name. But if you into into something more of a liquid cream texture rather than a powder blush i've heard that these are fantastic so they've added mm -hmm. four new shades they've already launched by the time you're watching this we've got peachy peach that's a descriptive name uh venetian rose little lilac and cherry splash um so that is increasing the range from four to eight um which is quite a big jump so Peachy Peach is obviously a peachy sort of orange colour. Venetian Rose is a beautiful rosy nude. Little Lilac is a very cool toned light lilac colour. And then Cherry Splash is a red. Um, so yeah, it's just padding out the range. If you're into it, this would be up, up your alley. They're 25 US dollars each. And like I said, they're available now. Oh, I'm so excited about this. This is the product from this episode that's going on my wish list. It is from Glow Recipe. It is the Papaya Sorbet Enzyme Cleansing Balm. So this is a face cleanser. Um, use it to your, remove your makeup or if you've got really dry skin and you want it as like a balm cleanser, go ahead, do whatever you want. Um, so this one is a PEG free balm that melts into a milky oil to remove SPF and makeup while gently, while gentle papaya enzymes smooth the surface of the skin. It hydrates, it adds glow and keeps your skin soft. 32 US dollars and it's coming very soon, apparently, to Sephora and Sephora Canada and GlowRecipe.com. Yeah, look, I'm interested in this but there's two things that annoy me a little bit, just a little bit. I do like Glow Recipe and I do like cleansing balms. So, you know, I will probably try this out if it's not, you know, as expensive as, like, if it's if it's fairly affordable in Australia, affordable, whatever, for Glow <laughs> Recipe, I will check it out. But the two things that annoy me, one, papaya, I can't fucking stand. Oh, you hate the smell. Papaya is icky as fuck. Um, it's just papaya to me, and there there are some fruits that just remind me of off fruit, like oh yeah, yeah. off. Papaya fruit. is one that can so easily smell rancid. Yeah, and that's what I just have in my head is like yeah. a rancid bin smell. Stinky papaya. fruit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm hoping that it smells a lot nicer than what's happening in my head right now. Um, yeah. But that one, that's the thing that kind of concerns me a little bit. But also, how effective is an enzyme going to be in a cleanser? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, Buzzword. that's an argument for any cleanser with yeah. any skincare claims. Which is why I you don't... Know, spend the money on them because they're just cleansers yeah it's on your face for seconds so yeah. any that claim to do anything other than clean your skin is bullshit yeah but i would still try it yes yeah <laughs> i'm keen on that one unless it stinks yeah i want it i will try it i still want to go oh, i keep forgetting we this was like way before COVID. I think this was in like February or something. Um, COVID got out of control. Um, we we were in the city and we tried their banana moisturizer. Oh my god! I still think about it. I it want that so bad. Good. I know. I don't know I why I haven't that. bought it yet. I still want it. I know why I haven't bought it. I'm still working through moisturizers, sure. and I got a lot of them, but um. I'm working on it. I'm getting there. This is the year it. that I'm making shit happen. 
Yeah. So yeah, I want the banana moisturizer and I want to smell this. Me too. So hopefully it comes to Mecca soon and I can check it out. Okay. Fingers I'm going to be very disappointed in myself, Hayley, and you'll be very disappointed in me as well. Probably one of the things from this episode that I am actually interested in, I won't buy, but it, it, it interests me. Is a fucking giant stupid highlighter from Huda. That just sounds to How me like three strikes and you're out. But for some reason, I'm like, it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. This oh. is the size of my head. I know. It's insane. It looks like a big sort of portal to another dimension. Um, yeah. But for some reason, uh, yeah. I look at this photo with the brush and how big it is compared to this person's hand. And I'm like, I don't need, A, I don't need any more highlighters. B, I don't need any giant highlighters. And C, I don't need any highlighters from Huda, yet no. I want it. Fair, <laughs> fair. She's done something right, because I want it. Um, anyway, this is a new highlighter. It's a limited edition release, which I think is really weird. So it's, mm. a, it's called the Nymph All Over Highlighting Powder. It's the holy grail of highlighters, according to Huda. It's super huge in size. They've blended copper and white gold pearls to create a universal highlighter. Um, so it's, they say it's 10 centimeters in diameter. They don't tell us the weight. So That's it could be, ridiculous. It could be like the thinnest highlighter of all time, just really big. Um, well, to be fair, they do have one out of the pan and it looks pretty fucking thin. It yeah. looks, it looks pretty thin. Yeah. So look, yeah, it, it looks pretty standard though. This reminds me of destroying the Jeffree Star highlighter back in the I day. I know. Uh, I so know. I think, to be fair though, to get that design, that geometric design on the pan, you can't have them too thin. Otherwise it will break. So exactly. um, chances yeah. are it's, it's thick enough, but I don't know how much yeah. it contains. Anyway, it's $55 um, and it looks gorgeous. US dollars, so it's expensive and it's exclusive, That's expensive. Ex exclusive to the Huda website. And then they also have the Nymph Highlighting Powder Brush, which is 40 US dollars, also limited edition. And it's just a large, fluffy highlighting powder brush. So you can use it on your face or your body. Now, yeah, uh, I think from what I've heard a lot of people say, um, okay, definitely a lot of people saying that this is really goddamn pretty. A lot of people are saying too big. A lot of people saying not universal. There's no such thing as a universal highlight shade, which is fair. Mm. Um, but I do also think that if it, there is going to be any shade that's universal, this is probably the closest to it. Um, but even with all that, I think it looks fucking gorgeous. I would be willing to bet a very large chunk of money that this will be back. It won't be a limited edition. Well, that's It'll what I was going to say as well. I just find it so strange that she has invested in new packaging, new pan design, a new product. She doesn't have any highlighters in her range, uh, except for, was there a highlighter palette? Anyway. Yeah, she did like quad palettes, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. no actual, like, it's, it's, an, it's a new component, new pan design. So they had to get new, like, machinery and whatnot. They had to, like... Yeah put a lot of money into this. She's talking about it being like the best ever, you know, universal. And then they're having it as limited edition. That doesn't to me- Not sound limited like edition. No way. I, I reckon, reckon they could call it- back. Yeah, I reckon they call it limited edition because the factory that made it is like, we can't manufacture any more of these for at least another 12 months because the line is too fucking long and coronavirus got everything fucked right up. Yeah. So I reckon, give it a year, this will be back. Thank you to this week's sponsor, Beta Brand. If you're out of clean loungewear, mix things up by changing into Beta Brand's dress pant, yoga pants. They're as comfortable as your PJs and their professional style will make you feel like you actually got dressed for the day. Beta Brand's customer favorite dress pant, yoga pants are made of wrinkle resistant stretch knit fabric, making them perfect for long work days or working from home. There are tons of different colors and styles to choose from like boot cut, straight leg, skinny, cropped, eight pocket and more. I love the look of the skinny leg 
travel dress pant yoga pants. The design of the pockets give the pants a little edge, so instead of just boring work pants, they have some nice subtle style while still being work appropriate. Beta Brand also launch new styles weekly. Right now, our listeners can get 25% off their first order when you go to betabrand.com beauty. That's 25% off your first order for a limited time at betabrand.com beauty. Find out why women are buying five pairs of these pants. Go to betabrand.com beauty for 25% off um okay it cosmetic also a brand i feel like we have not spoken about in a very long time i think i feel like the last time we spoke about them was christmas packs i feel like that is correct so we've got something coming up uh we don't know what it is so this will be an update for next week's episode unless we have an update and we can stick it on the screen for you if you're watching look at the screen right now (laughs) yeah. <laughs> there will be updates. Um, but this appears to be some form of face liquid. Um, they're not saying what it is yet, but they're showing it. It's interesting because they've got a pink one, which is not like a cool tone skin shade. It's actually pink. But then they have skin tone shades as well. So I don't know what it is. Uh, I sort of feel like it's just going to be a new foundation and then a primer to go with it. All right, we've seen some new lip kits from Kylie Cosmetics. Um, This is launching 31st at 9am Pacific Standard Time, so coming up really soon. Um, And this is slightly different because it contains a lip liner, but also the lip blush. So instead of it being a, a velvet lip or a matte lip, it's the blush, which is a newer formula for her. So it's more of that blotted matte lip, a little bit um, sheerer than their matte liquid lipstick. And they do have some permanent shades of this already on their site, but they generally are quite like vibrant pinky nudes um, yeah. or darker pinks, whereas these are for nude shades. So we've got uh, Heaven Scent, Au Naturale, you uh, do you boo and nude attitude and they all come with a matching uh lip liner as well they're nice colors i really like these nudes they, it's like neutral nudes um and they yeah, do they have, are nice colors yeah really nice so look i do actually want to try this formula i'm not actually going to buy one anytime soon if I'm ordering yeah. from Kylie, I would chuck one of these in my cart. Um, okay, let's talk about Makeup Revolution, I Heart Revolution. Fucking, it would be a revolution if these guys sort their shit out. Yep. Um, this is an extension of their Tasty range. They have new burger palettes and avocado lipsticks. So the two Tasty burger palettes are Grilled Cheese and Vegan Stack. So Grilled Cheese looks to be like a sort of warm toned reddish it's got like reds and browns and yellows and orange and stuff like that and then vegan stack is more cool toned but it's got blue and yellow and khaki green yeah i think it's actually supposed to be like it's like a minty color green ah okay yep yep uh and then we have tasty avocado lipsticks it looks like there's eight shades um I'm not going to go through all of their names. It's just, there's like pinks, nudes, browns, a red and a coral. So the outside is the colour, the inside is the moisturising part and it's not just called avocado for the sake of it. It actually does contain avocado oil. Avocado oil. All right. I don't hate it as much as I originally thought I did. um, Because that makes sense. (laughs) Your name has purpose. Yes. Even though we hate it, we accept it. Yes. <laughs> if there's actually a reason behind it, I won't. If there's a reason it so behind much. it, we don't have a problem. Yeah. Can I say one thing I really like about these horrible eyeshadow palettes? Yeah. <laughs> they look like back in the day, and I think this was in the 90s, um, in your uh, Happy Meal at McDonald's, you used to be able to get little McDonald's toys that, they looked like McDonald's meals, but then they turned into Transformers. Yes, they were the fucking best. Yeah. I These loved them like so the much. like the burger ones. So for yes. some reason, that that reminds it's me of that what it reminds you vibe, of. which I dig the toy element of it, not the makeup element of it. So yeah, so there we go. 
Okay, the last thing is from Wayne Goss. So he has released an eyeshadow palette and three coal eyeliners. Um, the eyeshadow palette is packaging that we saw ages ago. When Wayne was, or when he announced that he was creating a makeup brand, he actually showed the prototype to the palette. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it on Beauty News. And yeah, last year. Yeah, we're a bit like, um, okay. That looks interesting. We'll see what happens there. I think he did mention that he wanted to have big pans. Yeah. I feel like we were a bit like, eh, okay, I we'll think see. A few, a few packaging designs as well that he was tossing up between. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I do remember that. And, that. and that's why when he released lipsticks and lip liners and lip glosses as his first release, a lot of people were yeah. um, surprised because he announced his brand by showing an eyeshadow palette sort of yes. design. So it was a bit yeah. like, where's the eyeshadow palette? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the items are the Luxury Eye Palette in Imperial Topaz. It's 55 US dollars. And then the Essential Eye Coal Pencil, these are 14 US dollars, comes in three shades. Precious Opal, which is a medium bronze with a satin finish. Obsidian is a matte black. And Rich Hazel is a um, matte dark brown. Now it's all launching on the 30th of July. So it's out when you're watching this. Um, he did do a release video where he talked about these products. And <clears throat> it really fucking irritated me. I'm just putting it out there. It did. I'm irritated. He said in... Wait, should we, should we describe should we describe the palette first and talk about yes. the pros of Let's, it or like the description first and then we'll get right. to what he said about it that sort of all right yeah, let's doesn't do that sit as well as it probably should yeah let's do it so the palette is six pan palette it has two mattes three shimmers and one like sparkly shade i think the technically mattes, sorry i think that technically it's three satins and one shimmer according yes. to beautylish yep okay yep so the mattes are a black and a mid-tone brown mm -hmm. and then you have uh three shimmers that look to be sort of a champagne a cool toned rosy pink and then a peachy orange and the sparkly shimmer shade um is very very pretty it's kind of like a pearl yeah color it's um like goldy nude pearl yeah it's a really pretty yeah i think i really cool. like that shade um now in his video he talked about he talked about a lot of things let's talk about the size of the pants he chose this size of the pan because which is large. It, yes, which is very large. And he said that he chose it because he has had palettes in the past where it's difficult to get his brush into it. <laughs> How big are his brushes? I don't know. Because I feel like this, what they're showing, you could put this brush in it. You could. <laughs> you could. You could. You could totally put one of these in there and like, I don't get it. Um, I assumed that the size of these pans was this big because it was aimed at professionals. This, to me, this looks like a bridal palette. This is mm. exactly what you would see in any like qualified professional working, actually getting paid to do the job makeup artist that's working on a bride. This is a bridal palette to a T, but apparently not. Apparently it's so you can fit your eyeshadow brush in it. And he also said that when you use an eyeshadow palette, this large design is going to prevent the ugly dip you get in it, when, which comes from usage, because he's saying that other eyeshadow pans 
you have to only access the eyeshadow essentially in one spot. Whereas now you can get around the whole pan with your brush, yeah. which I don't agree with because square pans are notoriously worse to get into the corners of yeah. than circle pans for one. And also most people that hit pan in a certain area are doing that purposefully. If you wanted to skim the top every time, you can totally use up your eyeshadow evenly, but most people dip into the same spot because they want to hit pan. They want yeah. to see you. They want to see you pass. They can, yeah. So yeah. I think what his his justification for the large pans to me don't add up. And I do agree with you. It sort of gave me the vibe that this is a pro palette because only really professionals need to use this much eyeshadow yeah. of each color. Um, yes. The only other possible person that he could be marketing to in my opinion is people that want a basic eyeshadow palette because maybe they don't own any other ones they want a decent quality so they're happy to spend the 55 us dollars and they're happy to use one eyeshadow palette for day looks work looks night looks glam looks they just want the one palette that does it all yeah now those people generally aren't watching these videos because no, no. Uh, we're sort of makeup lovers here so we tend to have quite a large variety of eyeshadows or eyeshadow palettes, but there is definitely a market for people that just want the one palette that does it all with decent quality and they're happy to use it until it's either used up, broken apart or smells like garbage. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like it's either makeup artist or that sort of consumer. This doesn't seem like it's a wildly, um, I don't know, wildly... Like, it's not hitting a huge desirable. target market. Like, yeah, it, it's very, it's niche. niche. It's very niche. Yeah, it's niche. You're looking for a niche it, customer. Yeah. Even though it looks like it's a, a very accessible palette, it, it is actually targeting a, a, a certain niche. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so these pans are actually 2.7 grams each. So they do contain a lot of product. So there's that to note. He also said that in every single palette that he releases in the future, there will be a black eyeshadow. Yeah, look, that I think is going to alienate me from all his future palettes. Yeah. Um, I think there are two things that, look, I like a basic brown nude eyeshadow palette. So when I look at this and I look at the swatches, um, there is part of me that when it comes to the champagnes, that shimmer, the two browns, I'm like, these are beautiful. I would use yeah. these every day. If this was a quad, I would definitely give it a go. When it comes to the orange and the black, they're things that I'm less inclined to use. And when it, if, it, if I'm not going to use a third of the palette, I'm not going to spend the money. If it knocked it out of the park and I was going to use all six shades, I would love to try his formula yeah. to see if it's something that I'm interested in. But I honestly think that I've used maybe black eyeshadow maybe twice in the past year. It is not an eyeshadow that I use often. And um, I think we want to gauge interest as well with the comments. Yeah. We, want to let, we, we want you guys to let us know how often do you use black eyeshadow? Is it a staple for you or is it something that you avoid because it's not something you use in your everyday makeup uh, sort of looks? I feel like black, like I know some people that use black all over the lid often yeah. and it looks yeah. great on them. It's not me. And I feel like black is one of those things where the inclusion of black in an eyeshadow palette is like pineapple on a pizza. You either love it or you hate it. Yeah. And I feel like he's alienating all like a huge chunk of people by putting black in every single eyeshadow palette. And his rationale for it didn't sit very well for me because he's talking about the way that he likes to do his makeup and the makeup styles that he likes to use, which I totally understand this. He's saying he likes to press it onto the lash line to um, open up the eye. Yet he's released eyeliners that like one that, that's black. Isn't that what eyeliner does? I know. Also, I actually like, I think, okay, putting like pressing black into the lash line can be good if you want to create like a, a smoky lash line or something like that, or if you need to set the eyeliner which shouldn't be the case. They should fucking set and hold anyway. Um, but also the problem with doing that is often that's how you end up with black fallout from eyeshadow. Yeah. Like getting it dense on a brush and then pushing it in, it, it like often falls on your under eye. 
And I just, I don't, I just don't feel like people are going to want to use the palette in the way he thinks it should be used. And that's why he designed it this way. I just feel yeah, I like agree. it's a little bit like he's talking about using it in a professional sense. Like that's how I would use the palette. If I was doing a, like a wedding and I had a palette like this, I would use it on everyone. I would use it on mother of the bride. I would use it on the bride and I would use it on all of the bridesmaids because you can create different looks with it. But is, is someone going to buy it and like sit there and like press the eyeshadow into their eye? Like, I just don't. Yeah. Look, I, 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 don't know. I think he's, I think he's designing it to be used as a makeup artist, but then he's marketing it to, to consumers, consumers who use makeup in a very different way. Absolutely. And I, I think pressing makeup like onto your lash line is something that's easier for a makeup artist to do because it's something that's easier to do on someone else than yeah. it is to do on yourself. Yeah. So it is a technique that I think isn't a very everyday usable technique for consumers. But like you said, it's a, it's a technique that a lot of makeup artists use. But I'm firm on the opinion that if you like black, what you should probably do is buy a single eyeshadow that you really love the formula of, keep it out, use it with every eyeshadow palette yep. you own, every pigment you own, every whatever you own. And people should do the same with nude. Find your perfect nude yep, match that you're going to use to set your base or you know, whatever it might be, help um, blend out a look, whatever it is, and buy that in a single. So you're not, people aren't adding shades into palettes that bulk out the palette and their shades that aren't going to be used widely. Like my, my, um, sort of nude matte color shouldn't be in every palette because it's not going to suit everyone. So why That's put right. it there? So it's up to me to find that shade and to buy it as a single and to use it you know, along with palettes that I own in my collection. And I feel like that's what black should be. Black does not need to be in every single palette. No. Every single Wayne Goss palette. Because if you're going to create no, a and you don't need hand palettes, why is it a, a six of every single palette is going to have a black in it? You're alienating. You don't need 2.7 grams of it either. It's a fucking ridiculous. The, the fact that he's talking about like, you know, using it to press it onto your lash line or use it to like deepen up other colors like if it's a black that's worth its weight it's going to be pitch black and full of pigmentation which means it's going to be extremely easy to overdo it if you are trying to mix it with other shades to deepen them up mm. or if it falls out like under your eyes it's going to be a fucking mess i just don't i don't get it it's talking about professional techniques mm -hmm. For people who, like, makeup junkies aren't buying this. They're not. They're just not. Like, this is marketed to people who just want, like, like you said earlier, one palette. One yeah. palette for everything. And they're not using makeup artist techniques. I don't get yeah. it. Look, I think having the black in this original palette, if it's just like, this is your basic this is what makeup artists use. If you just want a one and done palette, it's not having it here, but announcing that a black will be in every single follow-up palette. Up palette, I think is not a smart move because you're going to stop repeat customers because they're not going to finish the black eyeshadow by the time your next palette. Ever. Is it's not going to happen, no. especially with pans no. that large. So it doesn't no. make sense to me. Um, and, you know, I just feel like, yeah, it, it makes sense here. But going forth, I don't think it makes sense. And if he keeps doing this, he's going to alienate more and more people because I feel like the people that are mainly going to buy this are his fans or people that are curious yep. about the formula. And those people uh, are not going to want to buy something or come back and repurchase um, palettes in the future that contain the same shade that they already own. It doesn't make sense to me. So I really wish he would reconsider that and look at bringing out, you know, have every palette have their own shades that haven't been repeated yeah. from past palettes. Because yeah. that is never a smart move in any brand, repeating no. shades. It's like putting a blue in every fucking palette. Yeah. It's dumb. 
The time has come to dedicate this episode to a Beauty News VIP, and this week's VIP is Hey It's Nay. Woo! Thank you, Nay, for thank supporting you. Beauty News, and thank you to everyone who supports Beauty News in whichever way you choose to do it. Kat, what is our emoji? All right, so because we want to find out if you like to use black eyeshadows and if you like them in palettes, we want you to leave a little black square or circle emoji, whatever you have on your phone or your, whatever, and either put a cross or a tick next to it. So if you don't like black eyeshadows in your palettes, do a cross. If you do yep. like them, do a tick because I'd love to know. We can't do polls anymore. They've taken away that feature on YouTube, but I'd love to know. Um, just market research because I'm curious. I don't understand why Wayne Goss is doing it, but maybe his audience really like black eyeshadows. Maybe we're really out of touch and people love black eyeshadows. So let us know. I'm curious. I'm curious. I don't reckon we are, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.